talk about services environments in CD, in CD stages. There are two versions, version 1 and version 2. Um, currently we are transitioning from version 1 to version 2, although we support both. I'll cover version 1 and explain what it is, and then I'll go into detail on version 2 and explain the differences and some of the um, uh, added benefits of version 2. So in version 1, with a service, you have the service up here and its service definition below it in every stage. They are separated in that the service is kind of a logical view of the service and the service definition is a physical view of the service. So this is really just a name, def description, and tags. Whereas down here we have the deployment type and the files, like a manifest, a Kubernetes manifest, and a values YAML file, and then an artifact. Having these separate has some advantages, but it also makes it difficult to make changes. For example, I'll show you. So if you added a new stage here, you'll have to, you can propagate from the first service, but if you select any service, you'll have to define its definition here. So now you have to define it at every stage. Instead of having the service and its definition in one place defined once and then simply copied to every stage and overridden um, where necessary. So that's service in V1. And now let's look at environments in V1 as well. So if I go to infrastructure here, we have, this, we have a similar thing to service where we have kind of the logical view here with we have its name, description, tags, and environment type. And then we have its physical view, the target deployment environment. In this case, it's a Kubernetes cluster. So we have a connection to that cluster, and then we have the namespace. And these are separated. So if I go to a new um, uh, infrastructure here, and another stage, I have to select the, uh, I'll just propagate this one. If I go to a new infrastructure, I have to select an environment again, and then I have to define the infrastructure definition again. I have to create a new one here. So it's not one entity. It is separated that way. And that's really what V1 is. In V2, we combine them. The service and its service definition are combined into one entity, and the environment and its infrastructure definition are combined into one entity. So let's look at a, um, I'll log out of here, let's look at a V2 service and environment. Okay, let me log into an account that has V2 enabled. Okay, here's an account with v2 services environments enabled. So here you're going to create the service and the environment separately up here, and you're going to define their definitions within their entities. So let's take a look at a service first. So here's a Kubernetes service right here. And if I go to edit, you'll see the service and its service definition are all one entity. So every time I use this service in a stage, it's going to use this service definition. Let's look at an example. We'll look at a pipeline. Okay, so here's a pipeline that uses this service, Kubernetes service. I simply select it, and it lists the service that I'm selecting. If I open it up, I can see the service definition, and I can edit settings here. If I edit them here, those edits are made or impacted um, and added here to the uh, main definition. So you have it as one entity when you're adding it. There is no separation like there was in V1 between the um, basically the logical and physical view. And the same goes for environment. I go to environment, I select an environment, and I have an infrastructure. I'm not configuring the infrastructure every time. So let's look at environments in more detail. So in an environment, I think this one is dev, I have infrastructure definitions. And if you remember in V1, I was creating an environment, I was selecting an environment, and then creating a, a new infrastructure definition for every stage. Well, in V2, I have an environment and I can simply create multiple infrastructure definitions and then select which ones I want. For example, in Kubernetes, each one of these infrastructure definitions could be a different uh, namespace. Um, they could be a different cluster. And so when I select it in the pipeline, I select the environment and then I pick which infrastructure I want to use for that stage. And I can edit it as well, just like I can with the service definition. And if I edit it here, the changes made in the main environment infrastructure definition. So that's both service and service definition and environment and infrastructure definition are now uh, full in entities, fully composed entities, centralized. Uh, 
Now let me go through the different uh, settings here and environments because we've made some changes as well. I already covered infrastructure definition, so I'll cover configuration, service overrides, and GitOps clusters. So configuration in an environment is actually the manifest config files and variables that you want to be that you want to use every time that environment is used. So any service that deploys to this environment in a stage will use these settings. In this example here, I haven't set anything, so there's really nothing that'll be used. Simply the ones set at the service level will be the ones that will be used. But if I had set some in the uh, config here, for example if I added a values.yaml file, it would override the one set of the service. It would be used because I selected it here. And so that applies to every service that, you, that deploys to this environment. If you just want to um, impact individual services, you can use service overrides. And you can add overrides for each, each one of your services. This is the service we've been dealing with here. So I added a values YAML file for this service, Kubernetes service. So that means whenever that specific service is used with this environment, this values YAML file will override the one in the service. And so service overrides, you can add multiple uh, for every service you want or any services you want, and it allows you to really uh, fine tune how, uh, what gets applied every time that specific service is deployed to that specific environment. Now, you're probably wondering how does this all work. So, there's manifest and config files. I'll cover manifests because they act differently than config files. With manifests, what happens is we merge the manifest in configuration, if there is one, and in service overrides, if there is one, with the values YAML file in the service. And all that really means is that if there's conflicts, there's an override priority. If there's no conflicts, the merge goes, it's just fine. There's no name value pairs that are in conflict. So it's all just a perfect merge. But let's say there's conflicts. What you have is a priority, an override priority. And here's the priority. Environment service overrides take priority over environment configuration overrides, which take priority over service level override, service level man, uh, yeah, values YAML files. So if you have a values YAML at each one of these levels and there are any conflicts, this is the order in which the conflicts will be resolved with service overrides winning over environment configuration and the individual service settings. That applies to manifests. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you had um, a conflict where the um, service definition had replicas, but the environment uh, service override didn't. It simply had service port. So the full YAML file that is deployed at runtime, the replicas will come from the service definition, and the environment service override uh, for service port here will come from, from the environment. Whereas, let's say there is a conflict and the environment server service override had this name value pair and this name value pair. Well, it wins. It overrides the service level settings. So that's an example. Now let's look at config files. Config files are different. They're more of a black box, so they're not values YAML files. There are, they could be YAML, they could be JSON files, they could be scripts. And so there is no merging. It is a full override. It still ma follows the same priority that I showed you up here, but it's a full override. There is no merging. So the environment service overrides completely overrides any environment configuration, which completely overrides any service level settings for config files. And last is GitOps clusters. If you're using Harness GitOps and you have clusters, you can add them here to your environment. And this is used when you're doing GitOps application sets and when you're doing what we call PR pipelines, changes to the uh, JSON config files in those application sets. That's an entirely different scenario, but I just wanted to explain that it's part of the environments as well. Okay, so now we've covered both V1 and V2, and you can see the differences, and most importantly, you can see the override priority and how you can fine-tune and use uh, multiple values files at multiple levels. And you can select multiple infrastructure definitions every time you select that environment.